Okay, I'm recording. Okay. So I'm going to just date it, and then we'll get started. All right. Um, and so this is Jeff Katz, and it is Tuesday, October 13th, 2009, and we are here at the home of Judy Wetzel. And it's approximately um, 1.45 p.m. So um, to get started, I just have a few general questions. Sure. And the um, first one is... Uh, where were you born? And if you don't mind sharing, um, what was your date of birth and what was your name at birth? No problem. Um, I was born in Phoenix, Arizona, but I was only there nine months, and then we I moved. We moved to Seattle, and I was born in. Um, I was born on June twenty fourth, nineteen forty, which means a decade is coming next June. So. <laughs> um, that's uh, what other. And what was your name at birth? Oh, excuse me, Judith Anderson. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what what, uh, what brought your parents to Seattle? Oh, my, my father worked for Shell Oil Company. He was credit manager for Shell, and so um, it may have been a transfer, you know, to Seattle. Okay. And, and we lived on we lived on uh, Queen Anne Hill. I went to John Hay Grade School and Queen Anne High School. We were first in an apartment, and then we moved around the corner to a home, our home, and uh, but that's where I grew up. And um, what what, what uh, did your mom do? You um, well, my my father um, passed away in uh, in 1949 when I was I was nine years old, and so my mother went to work. Um, and at that time, women. Women weren't working, but she was a very strong-willed person. I had a younger brother who was six, but I was nine and my brother was six. And she went and a shell oil company hired her. So um, we we grew up, you know, there on, on Queen Anne and, and mother was working and also mother, she was, uh, she, uh, after a period of time, she w was a world traveler and a lot of things you'll see in this home was things that she collected from the, from the Far East, mainly. Okay. Where, did you, uh, where did you go to college? I went to the University of Washington and um, was starting out in um, uh, commercial art, or is it some, I forget exactly, but um, um, and it was, I found that it was going to be too narrow and I got involved in political art, I mean, um, Political science. I, I ended up uh, being uh, studying political science at the university. I was um, a member of the Gamma Phi Beta sorority, and um, um, I can't. I, I, uh, I don't know what else. What do you when want? When did you graduate? Oh, I, I, I just went three years. It's, it's been three years. And about what, what years were those? Um, well, I was a class of 62, so it was through 61. Yeah. And, and um, I, I remember taking, I was at, on a trip uh, after that, a trip to Europe and um, to France. I became very much interested in France and have maintained that interest in France. That's something that you share with Peggy Goldberg. Oh. <laughs> She's a, a, also a passionate uh, Francophone. Right. Well, well, I, I, I now do. Um, my husband uh, had a stroke in '96, and he passed away in 2002. And um, he, um, our world is, was very much the world of, of politics and, and cross section. He took Wayne Larkin's place in the city council to pass Energy 1990. He was very involved in in environmental issues and. Um, uh, the municipal league and so forth, um, but he passed away in 2002, and I, I, I have a strong feeling that, you know, when 911 occurred, that that was a, a wake-up call for us as Americans, to, be more aware of other countries, other cultures of the world, and so from that time I have, um, I've traveled once a year, uh, I have, and I was went to the first year, actually with the first few years were with Rick Steves, whom I have. Great admiration for that his uh, his company is outstanding and the energy and the excellent guides and but I went to uh, Turkey the following year I went to Eastern Europe 
Then I went to the Adriatic, and this year I, you know, I wanted to go beyond Europe and an opportunity to take a, a tour with um, uh, Alita and Doug Oles, and she, her company is China Road, and she is from China. And so it was an extraordinary opportunity. And um, the only, only thing is that usually after, at the end of every tour, I go to Paris and stay in the same apartment my husband and I stayed in for you know for years, and China and Paris don't work too well. I mean, it's on the same route, and so. But we to give you a sense of, of France, we we bicycled in France for six years, so it was six one week in one part of France and the other in Paris. But I, I just think it's important as Americans that we begin to have a better understanding of, of as many cultures in the world. And my goal is to continue to visit countries where I know nothing about the culture and, the, and have never been there before. That's very ambitious. Well, you only live once. Absolutely. Well, could you, could you um, tell us when, uh, talk a little bit about um, when you met Jonathan and um, also your children and... and well, my, I was a precinct committeeman, so so I was interested, and uh, so so I met him through, when he was when he, when he was in office, I think, uh, because he was in the legislature from '65 to '75, and so as a precinct committeeman, that's when when I met him, and um, so I remember we were married in 1968, and he was a very proper. Princeton, Harvard lawyer, and uh, it was great fun. The, his friends in the legislature um, really loved it, having a more, more open, vivacious person because he was a little bit reserved. And um, he, uh, uh, we just had such good friends on both sides of the aisle, and, and they gave us a resolution on our first anniversary. And we, our oldest son was. Uh, we were born in Jan. We were married in January, and our oldest son, Jonathan Jr., was born on December first. And they oh, they were thrilled to have this new baby come to, to Olympia. But and we they gave a, us a big, the, the Republican caucus gave a large resolution resol, resolution to us, and um, it was very touching. And uh, from that time, from the time that John was in the legislature uh, forward. You know, I'm kind of addicted to politics. Um, I have tremendous respect for uh, the current senator from this district, Ed Murray. He's been a tremendous advocate of the arts. He's an outstanding man. He's a good friend, and um, we're, we're very fortunate. And uh, we've had other very, you know, Jim McDermott is from this this Asian, you know, and he he's have contributed so much, and he both. Um, Jim McDermott and um, and Gary Locke were very key in uh, some arts funding issues in the, in the state legislature, and they played very, very important roles. And uh, I I couldn't be more thrilled that Gary has had the opportunity he has today as Secretary of Commerce. That's awesome. It's pretty incredible. But yeah, we're pretty re well represented in that. <laughs> well, we we you know we're really. Um, it's, uh, I think it's really a, just an important compliment because I knew Gary in the legislature, and again, he was very key in this in um, uh, hotel motel tax funding. It also funds, this is related to the county, and uh, it also funds stadiums, but there's a portion for it that is, is, it was designated for the arts and culture and includes historic preservation and, and such. And um, it expires in 2012, so we have a, a challenge ahead of us because there really is plenty of money to fund the stadiums and also maintain the commitment to the culture of King County. Absolutely. And um, we're going to probably get to a lot of those issues later on in terms of where Seattle is now. I'd, I'd love to get your opinion, and, and we'll talk about that at the end. And. Um, I did want to mention one thing about Jonathan that I thought, I wasn't sure if you knew this or if you did, it would be just interesting to get your, your comments on it. Um, in the research I've done, I, um, I, I came upon 
something that Allied Arts sponsored in 1962, mm -hmm. which was called the Street I'm Most Ashamed Of contest. Oh, really? And Jonathan actually came in second place oh. <laughs> um, in, that, in that contest. So that was back in 1962. Is so that he, right? He entered and he came in second place, and his uh, suggestion was Highway 99 be developed from SeaTac Airport to East Marginal Way. So, um, so he was Wait, in second prize. He had a real commitment to the to the environment, and I and and I didn't know him in 1962, and uh, but he he cared very deeply, and I can show you in the other rooms the awards that he received from the Environmental Council and such. That uh, it, it made it was important to him to be involved in the in, in the community in the, in the city in the state now how many how many children do you have? there are two sons jonathan jr and james and jonathan jr is the in the beer and wine distributing business and uh james is a musician he plays tablas a road palm wine guitar sings like a tube and throat singer and also composes music but did they both two sons in seattle? They, they were both born in seattle they're 19 months apart and uh, we, we, we've had, so I have two sons, and then we have, we've had two dogs. One, one was Jack, a Springer Spaniel, and the current one is Jazz, a West Highland Terrier. And we, we've loved living on, I mean, when we moved, when we were first married in 1968, we gave the boundaries of the district to um, Patty Clake, who was a real estate person we knew. And that's, that's the reason this house was chosen. And... Um, I feel very fortunate, and I, I, I plan, we, we have a, the backyard, when we first came to this house, we, were, we would like the, the look of the house, and I'm not a pink person, but you can see there's a, a little pink in the stucco, but we looked in the backyard, and um, there was a swimming pool, very basic, you know, cement, vinyl liner, not a fancy, 18 by, you know, 12 by 28, and... Um, we were a little concerned. I said, oh, well, it's fine. Well, it became the gathering place. This, this Olin place, there are many of us that have been here. Um, I've been here, I think, the longest 41 years. So, um, But 30 years, 25 years, you know, and the children grew up. The, the, when I put up the blue flag, that means they could come swimming, and, but they had to bring a parent. And we, we'd hand out the pool rules at the beginning of the year, at the summer, as soon as it's... And, uh, so a lot of the children, we have pictures of birthday parties and everything around the pool. And then our Springer Spaniel loved to swim with the children. And today, now some of the children are of that children that grew up around the pool are swimming in the pool. So it, it, it's, it's not fancy one bit, you know, and, and it's, it's some cracks in the cement and so on and so forth. But it was a, it was a joy that we could all gather in the neighborhood and uh, we were very close close neighborhood friends and special people that we've always been cared deeply for. And Paul, Sh Paul Schell was a neighbor. Paul was just one, one, one block over on Howe Street. He was on Howe, and, and he and the, their daughter, Jamie, came over, and, 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 uh, and, of course, and of course Pam, so we were all a part of it, because it included people on Howe Street and Olin Place. Yeah. It's just, it's just one block. One, Howe Street is a... Is, the house in the corner is Olin Place, and behind it is Howe Street. They're, they're that close, yeah. You know, um, we, we're we're going to move to Allied Arts now, but before we do, I wanted to ask you, um, what were you doing in that period right before you became involved mm -hmm. in Allied Arts, and when you became involved in Allied Arts, what were you, what were you yourself doing? We, now you, you're, you're going back. Um. Late 60s, early 70s. <laughs> Um, well, you see, I think that um, because of John's, we were married in, married in 68, and so civic involvement was very much a part of our lives. And, um, and the um, um, being close to the museum, you know, I, the, the arts, outside of my family, there, there's nothing that was more important to me than the arts. Um, John was very involved in the environment, and then the world of politics was just part of our lives. And uh, so I remembered, um, I remember when I was expecting, I think it was our first son or second son, 
that I'm doorbelling, you know, for his re-election and so on and so forth. And uh, so the, 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 probably the first civic involvement was as a docent first, and then um, um, I'm trying to think, because John, I'm sure, John was keenly aware of, of, of Allied Arts and may have supported various things, but um, Allied Arts was really the advocate of citizens for the arts and arts funding and, and in the city. So um, I have a, in my notes there the, the years that I was involved and an officer and head of different committees and so forth. But it was a real, real pleasure and a terrific group of people that really uh, that cared about this city. And uh, we were dedicated to it. And so that the, the issue of funding was was critical and I, that's where it, we got to the point where okay we can fund the performing arts they that can be done how do we pre support the visual arts right. so so um, how did you first become aware of allied arts and what what actually got you involved with with them in particular okay what your mic is sliding down a little oh. bit I just want to Make sure it's not rubbing on the sweater. Okay, um, okay go ahead. So yeah, so so what um, what actually um, made you aware of Allied Arts, and how did you decide to become involved um, at that point? Now you're talking about you're talking about you know close to what, what almost forty years ago. <laughs> So I, you know, I'm trying to think. Um, I think John must have must have been aware of Allied Arts, and I, I, th I think really the, it has to do with their involvement as advocates for the arts. Um, I'd really have to go back through my papers, which I've, I have, I have saved. We both, both my husband and I are pretty bad about saving everything, but. Um, and I do have a, a file that I haven't been able to to uh, go through. That's sort of the history of my involvement in the in the arts. Um, but but it's the it's being an advocate in this city for the arts that I think that, that drew me to Allied Arts. Now, if you can re recall, what do you think the perception of Allied Arts? Or what, what do you remember the perception of Allied Arts? was at that point. How was it viewed by the city or by the... Oh, I think, uh, the Allied Arts was very highly regarded, I think, you know, as, um, because the, the, we had very articulate people that were committed, that were, were, took on tasks and projects and, and uh, would articulate, you know, before the city council or, or uh, at, at events where it was essential. Um, and, you know, issues were studied carefully and you know, committees, you know, did proper work to lay the groundwork, but because the the city meant everything to us and uh, the opportunities that were there and that were beginning in the arts, you know, needed significant support. And uh, so you, you know, one of the, sometimes when people have not have an, had an opportunity to be in a museum or go to a play or something there they may be a little reticent and so you know you also you think of ways that where you make the arts accessible and so that everyone because I think it I think you as noted in the article I wrote on art about public places I think art truly fulfills a human need you mean you may somebody may, may lecture you on on some concept or idea and you kind of resist that, but if you see see a performance, uh, or you know that that where the, the actors are doing, and you see them working through life, or if you walk in the public place and you see a work of art, you know you're getting another perspective on life. And so today, if you go to the opera, you're seeing the total celebration of all the arts, and it looks extraordinary. So um, it, it's really important to, to us as human beings. The arts play a really critical role. And today, um, uh, it, it's a really challenging time uh, f for funding. And I don't think that anything could be more important to this country than strong support of the arts. But I sort of rambled on there. That's, that's great. <laughs> now, you were... Um a vice president of Allied Arts for a number right. of years in the 70s. Right. And 
I'm just wondering if you could talk a little bit about that experience, what it was like, what the meetings might have been like. Um, what the... I, I have to be really honest with you. I, I, I'd have to go back and revisit those things. Um, uh, I, all I, I, it, it, I valued that position. I was honored to serve. Um, more the recently, I've, in going through the file, I've found the point that when I was chairman of the Municipal Art Committee, the, the actual physical things that we did, I, I have to review my, my notes from. It, so much has happened since that time, and um, I have to go back. But the the people, um, I have nothing but the most highest regard for the individuals that I worked with. And they were they were people of principle, of integrity, and um, dedicated to the the future of the city, and in particular the arts. If I throw a couple of names at you, sure. Um, you know, one name that that probably is best to start with is Paul Schell, since he was he was the president um, in seventy two and seventy three when you were right. very active. Yeah, and you'll see his picture in in the signing of the percent for art uh, ordinance. Um, Paul was terrific, and, and, and he, uh, he was a visionary, uh, without any, any, no question he was, and, and committed to the, the city and its development. And actually, when he was mayor, he convened a, a, a task force on the arts. So his commitment remained in leading Allied Arts and, and with that vision and what, what, what could be. And from the time he, when he became mayor and uh, still committed to that the, the uh, arts are on sound footing and, and, and proper funding. And um, we'll, we're going to talk about the, the percent for the arts in just a minute. I know that you, you and he worked together on that. But a couple of other names um, of presidents that you worked under, uh, that, that you were the vice president for. Um, another one, of course, was Mary Coney, who was uh, the first female vice president, the first female president of Allied Arts, and I'm just wondering if you could... Oh, she had an exceptional um, human being, um, again, again, incredible integrity, intelligence, um, someone that cared, could, sit, could look to the future, um, could gather people around, just as, as Paul did, you know, listened to all segments of the uh, of the community, I mean, and I think could draw people together and uh, and inspire them to move forward. That, that was a trait I think that a lot of people had that that, that really were made the organization strong and function well. That certainly makes you think of Alice Rooney as well. Oh, that she's very very special um, because um, to. Uh, be in a position of working with this broad cross-section of individuals and um, guiding them to be able to give their best and being and respecting everyone. Um, she was a dedicated leader and we was just a, such a major asset uh, to Allied Arts and, and it's always a joy to see her today and, and uh, uh, she was she was a real she was a major key asset to Allied Arts without any question. Now, I know that, that you worked at Pilchuck for a while as well, and I know that she, and she had clearly worked at Pilchuck for a while as, too. Um, was that an interest that the two of you shared at the glass? Office? Well, the um, my involvement with Pilchuck was after I left Poncho, and, mm -hmm. and and my husband had had the stroke, and then he was getting better, and they had never had a. Uh, uh, anyone who handled major gifts. And so uh, since John was getting a little bit better, they, they, they needed someone on, on staff. And so um, I, I, I decided I didn't really enjoy that. Um, I was there only um, five months and the executive director departed. So I had a very special um, opportunity and one that I'll always treasure um, is to, to wear about 50 hats and really get to know so many of the glass artists who I, I, I have such admiration for and, and respect and are such truly compassionate human beings. Um, what Dale Chihuly has done 
is, is, is such a major contribution and the people that he's, he is as uh, inspired to step in and, and lead um, and ben, ben Moore, uh, a glass artist and there are and then the people that work in the, the to make take care of the, the whole campus to make it function. Um, I don't want to leave out any names, so I, I just. Uh, but at the, at the time, Ben step, uh, stepped in, um, um, and to, to help in a leading leadership position because he'd worked uh, closely with Dale, and uh, I think you've seen um, Benjamin Moore's uh, glass work, and um, they, the glass artists. It was. I'll, I'll never forget them. I'll never. And uh, some I still see today. I have some pieces, um, and uh, we can be very proud of Pilchuk. And I was traveling even even when I was in China. I was in um, this city where I walked into this gallery, and uh, it, it was in this, this the countryside area. And I walked in, and I could see the influence still of Pilchuk in the glass that was blown there. And it was very interesting. So it's had a major impact, in, a, in um, and also Dale certainly has, you know, internationally in England and other cities around the world, in gardens and like, you know, he has has, has a major installations, and so Piltuck has had a major impact. And another name is, is Peggy Goldberg. Oh, Peggy Goldberg. Pe Peggy, there was known like Peggy Goldberg, and and. She and she always made her home available and worked. She was dedicated to Allied Arts. She was one, of, a tremendous advocate and one that that reached out to everyone and and uh, gave people confidence. And uh, personally herself was ex extraordinarily committed to the Allied Arts vision and and the future. And I thank the world of her. They're all those people you've mentioned, I, I have tremendous. Love and, and care and uh, respect for. I know that when we spoke to Alice, yeah. Alice mentioned your name over and over again. As well, oh, so. it's just me. As well as Paul. <laughs> I'm just me. <laughs> There's a, there are a couple of other presidents that I just wanted to toss out and just to get a, some feedback. One is Lou Pritchard, who you worked. Sure, with. I think we we Lou, Lou Pritchard did a, did a terrific job, and we just honored him actually at. He and his wife at St. Mark's Cathedral last Friday night, and um, he he was very um, he, he was very involved in the arts in the city. Very intelligent, a lawyer. Um, he was a terrific leader. You know. And uh, I think this was maybe a little bit before you got involved. But uh, do, do you recall working with Fred Bassetti? Oh well, you see, I knew, knew Fred. Um, because it, it, John knew him well, and um, what a joy to to see the work that he has done and to, to see his career and his design and so forth. But he he played a very important role. I was not as involved under his leadership, but he was so highly regarded and and is still today. I think there was an article in, in this Sunday's paper, you know, covering. Something that he had designed that had been re restored. Or it's, uh, he he's he's a special special person. Yeah, we had a chance to talk with him, and um, it was very inspiring. I bet it was. I bet it was. Yes, he he would. Um, so so I mean, at, at this point, um, I do have other people that I'm going to ask you about, but. I, thought that it would be better at this point to <coughs> talk a little bit about the percent for the arts, because mm -hmm. that was a huge part. Actually, there's a document that Allied Arts produced, I don't know exactly when, but around 76, which stated that you have devoted a good part of your life to 1% for the arts legislation. Yeah. And this was about 76, so up until that point it had been about, five, about four or five years already. And um, many people, as I said, have mentioned that you're, you were really pivotal and uh, in getting this legislation through. Well, uh, this, this goes, to the, but the point is that you can pass legislation, but when you get into the bureaucracy, you have to protect the integrity of that legislation by how the, the plan and the process, how it's, it's incorporated in, into government. 
And so that's why it was really passing the legislation was the first step. The key next step was how to, is that fit into the bureaucracy and what is the process that it goes through to maintain the integrity of, of, of the legislation and also to truly honor and respect the visual artists of this community, of this state, you know, uh, internationally that, that come and compete and that are chosen to create, you know, art in public places in our city. And uh, I, it, it's been thrilling to watch from that, from that time that we passed the legislation to what is occurring in, in our city and how accessible uh, the arts are, and that gives me a great deal of personal. Uh, I'm so I'm so pleased, and uh, because I had I had the opportunity to really work with exceptional people, and um, the uh, the the artists of, to especially the, the artist group Tag. Um, they they were outstanding people. That were uh, Parks Anderson was was a key leader there. You, you know, so, uh, I hate to list all the names because I'll forget someone. But 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 you have um, Chris Kirk, Bob Mackey, uh, Michael Spafford, Liz Sandvik, Moreau Fitzgerald, uh, Ted Johnson. Um, uh, I'll forget some names and just not like to forget anyone because they they made a real commitment and their perspective was so important. And then you've got Allied Arts, who was the advocate, the civic advocate, and another very absolutely critical arena. And then the Arts Commission. Um, so all of these... Um, uh, this goes back to the the integrity of this legislation. So, it we passed it, but the next step is essential, and the, the integrity and the uh, the detail in assuring that that legislation is properly carried out, as it was was the goal of the legislation, is is extremely well. It's a difference between if what you intended to do was a success or, or, or if it doesn't fulfill what it was intentioned. You know, so that, that's why you have to really spend a lot of time in, in was the legislation is interpreted and in, installed and carried out by the bureaucracy. And I think, I think you, you, and you'll see in the, that what I wrote, you know, how the selection process, all, all of those details the maintenance, you know, the, uh, uh, there are all kinds of facets that have to be taken care of. Could you talk a little bit about the, the evolution of, of the Percent for Arts, it's where it started and how, how it, the different um, manifestations of it? Well, you see, um, Allied Arts being an arts advocate, as I, I may have, if, you know, the, the Arts Commission could easily take care of the performing arts. Because it is clear you, could, you could fund grants to the performing arts, but you don't. Well, how do you fund grants to the artists at large, you know, throughout the city? And so it was. Um, it it was this opportunity to, to meet these artists who I met because I went, was a docent at the Seattle Art Museum and I wanted to hear this presentation about art in the airport. That I had the chance, you know, to meet. Park Sanderson, Chris Kirk, Bob Mackey, Ted Johnson, and uh, and then attend those meetings. At that, that time, Sarah Clark was also a very key person. She was at the Seattle Art Museum, and Francis Chilantano. Would, and um, so, uh, now, as I say, there were 95% uh, artists, visual artists, about 5% non, non. And um, so they were interested in you know, how we would fund the visual arts. Allied Arts saw the vacuum there that, that the performing arts were funded, but not the visual arts. And the Seattle Arts Commission wanted to do their job as part of the, selected by the, the city government. And um, so there, I forget the name of the city in New York. It was a small city that had uh, this legislation. And I think there was also a city in California. There were a few other examples in, 
And so we took a hard look at that and then we started the process of developing this legislation. And as I've said once before, that it, it was really also with the assistance of members of the city council um, and um, John Miller, I think Bruce Chapman was on one. I'm trying to remember all the names of the various members of the city council. And then Jack Robertson from the Applied Physics Laboratory. And um, so it, it, the, the language of the ordinance is, is very, very critical. And thanks to, to uh, there was a piece in there, if I needed to bargain, that was, I was ready on that. But uh, fortunately, we were a very successful and the council passed it. And uh, as I say, we went on to the state of Washington. And at the time, uh, the county took a look at our legislation and copied our legislation, changed it a little bit, um, I believe, and gave some support to the performing arts. But they also have a, uh, a strong, a very strong art and public places program. And then, um, and so, then, and then I had, as I told, mentioned before, that the chance to serve on the Seattle Arts Commission, then the State Arts Commission, and most recently for Culture Board. And it, it's been a joy to see what, is, what has occurred since the 70s. Could you explain a little bit about how, how the percent, percent of arts worked? What, what, how, it, how it got triggered? Just to kind of clarify how the money actually would, would be. Well, it's one percent of capital construction mm -hmm. in, the, in the city, and so so then those and then um, again you'll see in, in the paper that I wrote, you know how sometimes there will be a jury of three or a jury of five, and, a, and like in the jury of three, there always have to, you you have to, the integrity of that committee of that jury. It's very key. So that on, a, on a, a jury of three, you, there has to be one art, artist that is respected and, uh, and, and with knowledge in the field. And five, you, have to, you should have two. And then you have people from, you know, from, either from the, from the project or uh, other very knowledgeable people. Because in the jury process, you have to have the respect of the, the visual artists in the community or else they're not, they're not going to get involved. And uh, so it, it's really the, the um, uh, I think the responsibility, I think the Arts Commission, I, I think, would, would handle that and would appoint uh, the juries. And then it's the same thing at the state. And so their process to open, you know, open the, the uh, uh, the opportunity for the artist deadlines and so forth, handling all that process. And so again, that, you know, all those details were in, incorporated when uh, we w worked on the legislation after it had passed. That's a pretty time-consuming effort. It, 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 it's very time-consuming, but it, it is the critical issue. You, do, you don't, you never pass legislation and say, oh good, that's passed. You have to make sure that the the the, the true integrity of it, the the, um, the reason you you uh, work so hard to pass it, you have to make sure that it addresses the community that you want to address, and then that's the visual artist. Mm -hmm. No, it's it's there was a uh, period where there was a, a threat to to the percent, and, and there was some. A legislator, I guess, a council member who was who was requesting that the, the 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 funding be cut, and there was some controversy about that, which in the end I think it got restored. But do you recall that that little period of difficulty? Well, I don't. I don't at the moment. I don't exactly remember the the specific one, but there are often. I mean, even recently, mm -hmm. you know. Um, the you know comments about percent for art and, and maybe we should cut it in half or something. You know when you look at the amount of money and you start to compare it with other commitments that are made by the city, the county, or the state, uh, it's a real statement. And also when you begin to look at what what this program has done for this city, this region, this state. Um, but it's always you know you it's it's always an issue. I mean. You know, it's a difficult time today, and uh, 
but artists have to survive also. Artists have to, you know, and uh, you know, everyone needs to be uh, needs need to be addressed, and um, you know, they need to make a living. And you think of what they contribute. You think of what all the artists do, whether it's the in the, in the, the extraordinary commitment of all the arts, and with again, my belief on how the arts are so important to us as human beings. And uh, so th- it is a critical that that remains a priority, that the arts are funded. We, it, as I say, it's it's a difficult time right now, and uh, we we continually have work to to be done. Uh, to assure that these organizations and the organizations are working very hard to to to, to be very accessible to the population and and uh, welcome the population uh, because even you know sometimes there are 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 young people that maybe have unfortunately have not had a chance to experience the any area of the arts and you know when when you when you look at what it means to them and their creativity and their persp- their just their perspective on the world and how it develops their curiosity or their spirit of you know and it's it uh it's a very important part of their lives you know through school and and forward in the city that they live in and that was a huge a huge uh, part of allied arts uh focus which was to create a more cosmopolitan. That's right. That's right. A climate, greater climate. For the well, and I, th- I think that that Seattle's been recognized. I mean, Seattle does that. We do have a little problem of process that sometimes goes on forever, but um, but you look at the quality of life and the the environment of this city, and then you look at the arts in the city. Now, I mean, I mean, the the visual arts mean. And everything to, to me today. I'm 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 a little more involved. Uh, um, I'm on the opera board, and but I when I was executive director of Poncho, I felt that it was important for me to be very aware of, of all the arts, and I still continue that on today by subscribing to the opera, the symphony, the ballet, the rep, intimate act, on the boards, early music, book it, uh, and you know the, the Seattle Art Museum, the Henry Gallery. Those, what those institutions bring, and and what the, vi- the visual artists in, that have brought the art public places program to this city, uh, that's that's what makes makes this city such an extraordinary place to live, and uh, you know you know and it's it's uh, it's a real celebration of life, but it's also also the, a really uh, personal uh, deep strengthening. To have that exposure to the arts and um, that expression, it's really important to us as um, as human beings. There was in the article that you referred to, which is the um, the article that appeared in is it Puget Sounding? Yes, uh huh. And that was 1976. Right. And you wrote uh, it, it's called Art in Public Places. Right. And you wrote that art in public places humanizes our cities and creates civic pride. That's right. There are economic and historical testimonies to the value of art in public places, but I feel the strongest impact is in the fulfillment of human need. That's right. Art should get our attention. That's right. You know, I mean, because you may not always, initially, it may shock you or it may surprise you, but, you know, it's like looking at things with a new perspective, you know, and that energizes people. That gives you, that that shows you there's more to this world and uh, other ways of looking at things. You become a stronger human being. I think. I, I just wanted to to um, follow that up with that, that that period was a lot of activity in terms of public places, art in public mm-hmm. places. And um, wondering if you could. If you recall the the conference that took place in the early '70s, Art in Public Places, which Fred Bassetti chaired, and it brought a, a lot of different artists together to talk about art in public places, and it was held at the Pacific Science Center. Is that ring a bell at all? I think, I think um, uh, Klaus Oldenburg was one of the speakers, and there were a bunch of others. Yeah, I, uh, I. I'm sorry, I don't remember the exact details. I mixed because it, it also there was a 
remember I was head of one of the task forces, but I think it was a later conference. I, I'm, I'm not, I, may, I remember that Claus Oldenburg came, and, and it may, was that the, where, where there were different, where there were maybe 15 different groups with the chairman? Yeah. Yeah, because, because I remember I headed a group and I had some strong-willed people in my group and uh, it's, I don't remember what the issue was, but I think our group uh, made an exit. <laughs> but, 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 you know, I, I'd have to go back in my notes and um, uh, there was very principled position, I believe, and, and uh, I, you know, I'd, I'd have to go back. It's, um, I don't remember all the details of that. I apologize. That's okay. It's <laughs> there, there, there is, you know, it's been, life has been, there's never sort of been a moment, I, I keep looking for them occasionally, of, you know, where things are not pretty intense. And, and the, because you, you, I always say you only live once. And if you, there's something you believe in, I think this is the joy of, the, of, of living in the city is that you can make a difference. If you are committed, if, 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 if you are a principled person of integrity, and you know what you're doing, and you can gather support, you know, it, uh, there. <laughs> I wish I knew how to turn it off. And then, then, then the voice sounds too. What does the voice say? What well, tells me who's calling? Because I, I have, um, you know, one of the things that I have um, caller ID, not yeah, so you know who's calling. But then that voice, I don't know how to turn it off. I have I've, voice caller ID. Yeah, well, and and I and I'd like to learn how to turn it off because you know it speaks right up. Yeah. And um, and they, and and it's mechanical, so it isn't always you know it's an unusual interpretation. Uh huh. But anyway, but, but 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 it's helpful having voice, you know, caller ID, oh, yeah. because um, you kind of get a sense of what the solicitations are going to be, mm -hmm. and uh, and so forth. And then they can leave a message if it's really urgent. So. Yeah, I think, uh, my opinion, caller ID is like the greatest invention. Uh, I, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I think I think it's really critical. It really yeah. Yeah, and. And um, and even you know just time wise and so forth, it's mm -hmm. yeah, it's yeah, helpful. Pick up solicitor calls. No. <laughs> yeah, it, you know we're on we're on phones all the time. We, you know, as, as life is, you know, it's it's interesting looking back. I remember when they first had a fax machines came out. Mm -hmm. I wasn't going to have a fax machine. I, I you know, well. What's happening? You know, I have, a, I have a fax machine. We, you know, now we're we're all in the computer world. Well, you know, and even more that that's another example of why people are caught up in this in this electronic you know world. And that's even even a, a stronger reason that the arts play an important. So you get so caught up in this this driven uh, way of life. But um, going back to my, my comment about you know, life and not never becoming sort of uh, lots of extra time. Um, but, you know, this comment, I said you only live once, and if you believe in what's in something that you want to do, it's, it's, it's thrilling to what can be done if you have, the, if you have, if you've done your homework, if you have the integrity, and or it's a respected idea that or you teach people about this idea and are able to um, to articulate what its significance. Um, it, the city individuals have made made major contributions, and we're very lucky to live in a city where where individuals can still make a major difference. And it's important to be involved in the civic life of your city. Yeah, everyone benefits. I'm wondering if you, if we, we, before we started filming, we were talking a little bit about kind of the route, the legislative route that the, um, that the percent for the arts was taking and what was involved in terms of going to legislation, talking and this and that. And just wondering if you could 
maybe talk a little bit about that again uh, for the for for the interview. The just how that how that kind of worked. Well, first it was all it was the the the, uh, the three organizations that were the the basis, and I think the fact that that we had the artist group, which is uh, the, the the voice of the artist, the uh, the judgment, the input, the uh, uh, when we have such outstanding, exceptional human beings that are artists and they contribute to that language and assure the integrity of it. And then you have the strong advocate of, the amazing advocate of allied arts at that period of time that was, was so important to the future and what the city was. And then you have the Arts Commission, who are the commissioners that are appointed by the mayor, and then their responsibility. So we, we came together, and, um, and so you have all the, the components working on one piece of legislation. And then you have a very diverse uh, group of people that have looked at that language of the legislation, that have, extreme, uh, have extensive knowledge in public policy and, and legislation. So those were, were, were blessings. And so when we did pass it at the city, um, we had a piece, we had a piece of, uh, we had an ordinance that, had, that was really an, an exceptional piece. And one that, we, fortunately, we didn't even have to use our bargaining piece. We got every, we were able to pass it all. And so then it was a, a piece of legislation that the county could copy. And then it was a piece that we could then easily uh, move, change a few things and move it to onto the state, and so um, once we had the momentum going, um, going to the state legislature and um, passing it at the state. I mean, you know, we, we you do you talk to people. The arts are nonpartisan, so at, at that time, you know, um, I, I don't. Yeah, we should go back and take a look at what the vote was and so on and so forth. I know. As I say, uh, in the uh, Senate, of uh, the state Senate, they did cut us in half at midnight, but um, there's still uh, it still generated significant funding. But um, it was, I think it was the it really was the dedication of the individuals that, um, and, and I'd like to go back and make sure that I I listed every single person that you know that went to Olympia that that made the effort to speak to their legislators, especially the key leaders. And um, because if we didn't have the people that were highly regarded and, and intelligent and, uh, and with integrity and expected, we couldn't pass that kind of legislation. It, it was really groundbreaking. Um, and uh, so we were, we were very fortunate. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what the other specific things that um, actually, I'm, I'm just wondering if you could talk a little bit about the artist group that tag because that's a group oh. that not, not everybody remembers, but they were quite. Uh, well, quite important. I, I'd love to have you speak to some of those individual artists. As I said, um, Park Sanderson uh, played a very key role, um, and um, Chris Kirk, Bob Mackey, Ted Johnson, Michael Spafford, Liz Sanovig, Francis Chilantano. Um, and I'm, the thing is, it's, it's terrifying is I'm going to forget someone's name. Moreau Fitzgerald was involved. And um, that was a real commitment of individuals to have to, to take time and to meet and discuss the issues. I think J John Guys at one point was also involved. And, um, uh, but, but to have artists come together and th they all have different, different Perspectives and interpretations of, of you know all, all sculptors, painters, um, and it was really the the uh, the friendship and respect that I had for them. I will never forget them. Uh, a great many of them are are, are are still close friends, and and uh, as you walk through this house, you can see some of the works of art, um, but. To, to have the visual artist be a, play a key role is, is, is really critical. And to think that a, a very diverse group of people can all come together and reach a consensus is a, is a real gift. 
uh, for the for the climate at that time, the the the, uh, art, the visual arts community, and then for the future. Um, so um, I um, it would be, it would be I would feel very positive if you had a chance to to speak to some of those individuals and and they could recall um, some of that because it's a few years ago and <laughs> I wish I could remember every single detail but as I said um, uh, once we passed that legislation and did these various things things didn't stop you know and it's because um, and as I said before I, I went on to become the state's first arts lobbyist and so that's we're dealing with other legislation and then um, after that, I was asked to be executive director of Poncho, um, which I, 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 in the interim, I was the guest of the West German Foreign Office and went to Germany to see their their um, the, their support of the arts, and then came back and took started Poncho in '81, serving in Poncho, and then I stepped down in '95. So you know, life never, you know, and and. And, and you know, you if you care about something deeply, you you stay, you continue to stay involved and make sure that things are going as they should. Because yeah. if you can't, just let it go. And and I think I think we can be very proud of this, of this city, and it's going to be interesting to see how we move to the future. And um, but I think for you know, I feel in many ways that now, one of my responsibilities is is to empower and energize the next generations to step in and take leadership. And uh, I think those of us that have been involved for so long, it, it's now that commitment to make sure that next, those next generations uh, are involved and, and ready to take on leadership roles. Okay. Just a I actually was curious, you mentioned um, a bargaining chip before, and I was curious about what that bargaining chip was. That <laughs> well, the, 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 this was thanks to Jack Robertson from the Applied Physics Laboratory, and, I, and he served in, uh, I think, three federal, uh, uh, served for three, di admit, three admin different administrations and, uh, here in the uh, Applied Physics, and it was the underground wiring. The, uh, so the underground wiring was added on, and very, very fortunately, I mean, I'm not sure I even want to bring it up because it's all one, one but that was potentially going to be a bargaining piece that I might be able to, if I got everything else in. But it's, it's important, uh, I think, when you take a look at the collection and what we were able to do, uh, it, it's very important that that was included, yeah. And that was a huge area for Allied Arts as well. Yeah. <laughs> Which Jerry Thome worked on for years. Oh, really? Now, um, you also were the, we were the chair of the Municipal 1% for Art Plan Committee. Yeah. Which was in 76. And what was the difference? Well, in that, that, that's the one where we, where, we, where we talked about, you know, moving the legislation into the bureaucracy. And we made the presentation uh, to the Seattle Arts Commission. And it was in that, I, I've been wanting, I want to go back, and I think you have a copy of it. Mm -hmm. um, initially, one, the one area that gave a little anxiety, not, I guess, more than anxiety, but we had a Seattle Visual Arts Center. And so there was some concern that that was going to compete with the museums. And so, so that, so, um, uh, that that was one piece that was that got a few people excited, but I think um, you know all the the organizations were all involved. I headed the committee, but the input of the artist group, you know, Allied Arts, you know, there's I have to go back and and just uh, I'm sure you have that in the the detail, but um, the municipal arts plan again was again assuring the the integrity and the intention. Uh, of that legislation as it works into the bureaucracy. This is a, a, a I just wanted to show you, this is a, a report that you wrote. Um, right. Yeah. 
calling. Uh, our first proposal was delivered to the Art and Public Places Committee. Okay, okay, and then the second proposal was the Art. Okay. Um, yeah, the, the goal of the 1% plan is for sale to realize quality of art for public places, which would expand the public experience with visual art and which would recognize the important role of the visual artists in our society. Yeah, and I think that, um, let's see, the, uh, oh, that's right, really, really back to Pat Fuller being the visual arts coordinator, and then the panel that would speak about, we included, of course, Paul Schell, and that now he's director of the community development and folk of Andor Willis Woods at the Seattle Art Museum, Buster Simpson, David Hancock's. And uh, I guess uh, this this was something. This but it was a preliminary meeting. I see. Okay, I haven't gone. I haven't had a chance. I've been away, and I haven't. Uh, I do tend to keep all these papers, um, but I'm I'm very proud of the work that was done. And it was it was everybody. It, it was all the people that um, that uh, that were involved in the process. And I, I have to be honest with you. I have to go back and. And really take a look at some of this. Um, so, this is the amended city ordinance will strengthen 1% program. So, I don't remember exactly all the details, but uh, we worked at it. Did you? Um, how? What was the experience like with the with the mayor and the council through throughout this period? Um, was it a good experience working with with? The council members. Well, we we, I, we knew a members. lot of the, I knew a lot of the council members, and I, yes, have tremendous um, tre tremendous respect for them and that those that uh, be, because we knew them because they, they knew that we were, were um, they could they could uh, that we had made a commitment to present them with legislation that was really going to make a contribution to the city, and also you know they were aware of how. In, that we supported the performing arts, but that, that, that we needed to, to way, find a way of supporting the visual artists. And, and many of those, you know, um, of the councilmen at that time, you know, helped even in the making sure our language was correct in the, in the ordinance before it was passed. And then um, it was thanks to their support uh, that we were able to pass it. Yeah. Do you want to take a stretch? Oh, I see.